Merry Christmas, peeps. I wanted to put that out there first and foremost. I hope you guys are having a lovely holiday, a long holiday weekend. Who would have thought Christmas would be on a Tuesday? Ill, but it is what it is. I wanted to come here and hope you guys are having a great uh, holiday, enjoying your time with your friends, your family, downtime. Hopefully, you know, a lot of people aren't working. I know some people got to work. It's all good. Just know I'm thinking about you. Hope you all are enjoying your time off. If that, enjoy some good Christmas movies, some good Christmas horror movies. I have a couple things in mind I'm planning to watch this evening later on uh, with some family. And just wanted to just come on here and get that out of the way before we get into what I want to get into. And that is movie news. I want to do a little uh, Christmas special edition one. Do you all like want to wear this since I'm not wearing a t-shirt of you know showcasing some holiday I decided to wear my lovely little trusty headband you know with good old Rudolph up here if you all can see let me move it you see that do it Santa do it do it okay I'm cheesy like that sometimes whatever you all like it it's all good um so anyway but needless to say yes I just love to wear this I have a couple of these this is one of my favorite ones I love Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer <laughs> that's my childhood so I can't help it so but with that said you guys I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it just want to be festive so what you, what you can do is don't get distracted by this dangling on my head you know, focus on the stuff so you can comment, whatever, and all that. Hopefully, you all can move past that, but it's just going to be lovely decor while I do my uh, news. So, but moving on from that. Now, I have a couple things I want to discuss um, that I saw at the beginning of the week that I really want to just kind of do. I didn't get a chance to do it over the weekend. I was just enjoying my weekend. I some much needed rest. And since, you know, I'm off today, I wanted to do it today. Hey, nothing wrong with that. So, but with that said, the first thing I want to discuss is Wonder Woman. Now, Word is out that they have wrapped filming. Yay! I'm so excited. Oh gosh, I love me some Wonder Woman as you all have known from me multiple times as I said it from the beginning of the first trailer down to the movie coming out until now Patty Jenkins, you know, starting up with Wonder Woman 1984 and of course starring our girl Gal Gadot. We have Chris Pine coming back. We have Pedro Pascal, part of the team, Kristen Wiig, and we also have my girl Natasha Rothwell in here. So we have a nice little, uh, good little meaty cast I'm so excited about. Now, I know that recently on um, Instagram, Galdo put out there, you know, just a couple of little nice little words where it shows like a backdrop of what looks like to be uh, the film crew. Patty and her all excited because it has wrapped and she just kind of noted like you know we did it again you know she says with her crew she couldn't do this without her over a thousand you know film crew you know on the set whichever and she was just like I'm excited and happy to share this with you guys when it comes out in 2020 now you all recall it was supposed to come out in June no I'm sorry not June November of 2019 but it got moved um what's the mood it took Charlie's Angels reboot took that slot and now they've been pushed to a more good date, I think. And I really feel like it probably is the best date, June 5th of 2020. So I'm excited uh, for this. I'm also excited, as you all know, because now that they've wrapped it up, that gives them all this time, all of next year, honestly, but not until Comic-Con, to start working on the proper, you know, edits or whatever, which Patty Jenkins would do. And let's just say that um, Patty is going to make sure it comes out just as good as the first one. Let's just say before she came on board, they had a lengthy ne contract negotiations. And let's just say she got a nice little pay raise. Yay for her. And I'm glad they did that because it's like, you know, not like you need extra incentive to make sure you do a good movie. But you know your worth. And they showed her that she was worth every penny they're paying her. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what she did with this particular, uh, just moving this story forward with Wonder Woman. Um, I'm also looking forward to, you already know, is seeing Kristen Wiig playing Cheetah. You already have heard me say multiple times, I can't wait to see how she's going to look. You know, we know we're going to get the CGI somewhere, of course, probably with those leaps and bounds and, you know, jumping up in the air. As you all remember, I posted pictures a while back of her being harnessed, you know, during certain scenes. There was a scene where she's being what looks like to be almost kind of assaulted by somebody, whatever. Don't know if she got upper hand, who the man was, whatever. Then you were seeing scenes where she's probably jumping up into a building or whatever. So I'm just looking forward to seeing Kristen Wiig do her thing. Like I said, she's known to me personally as being more of a comedian so seeing her and she does some drama but seeing her in something of comic book you know type film now is a little out of the element I'm used to seeing her in so I want to see her do her thing also with Pedro Pasco playing 
an undisclosed villain. We still don't know his overall premise. We know the name, but they won't go into any detail with him. So I'm looking forward to that. Still don't know what Natasha Rothwell is doing. There's something wrong with that. I need to know what my girl is doing, you know. But I'm so happy for her. I'm happy she's in this. She was even happy when she posted it on her social media. So I'm looking forward to hopefully we'll learn more into the new year with this. But like I said, I cannot wait for them to showcase this during Comic-Con. I need to see a good teaser. I need it. We need it. It's going to be hard because we have over a year, well over a year before this comes out. So... I'm hoping we'll get they're gonna give us a small teaser because it doesn't come out to June and this doesn't Comic Con doesn't happen until you know the late summer you know so we'll have to see but I'm feeling patty but I think we'll have something to give us just a little taste just a slither so but I just want to bring that out there I'm so excited hype you know one person I do follow on YouTube you know and he's doing his damn thing is Jody I know Jody cannot wait to see whatever whatever they put out <laughs> for this movie and i'm looking forward to watching him you know see it when it comes out whatever i just think he's doing his thing he's he's so cool for himself but with that said moving on you guys now one movie i'll be honest with you i'm now that excited you know honestly and not be, and i'm being very honest because i discussed this over the last um months about this and that is the hobbs and shaw spit off from fast and furious um we have what looks like to be some sort of you know might be an adjust an adjustment in the title and then they're just continuing, you know, in regards to production with that. Now, what I said before was the way it went about, I didn't particularly care for in regards to how this came to be. I'll put it like this. I find it very interesting how we haven't heard a peep out of uh, Mr. Diesel in regards to how his feelings about this. We have heard from other people who made comments about this and that being one of them being Tyrese Gibson, you know, he making that very well known. And then some other people having other issues with other aspects, you know, in regards to the franchise. But I'm down for Dwayne Johnson doing his thing because he's all about his business. He's, he's out there. He's getting his hustle. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like the way it was done, you know, not getting the blessing of the people who were all involved with the overall Fast and Furious franchise, whatever, and you're just jumping out there. When you come in there, you know, and what? the Fast and Furious 5 whatever, and all of a sudden now you're like oh I want to kind of de deviate and make my own thing so you can make your own side money and your side hustle gotta be careful with that because that's considered a slippery slope whatever and all that and that doesn't garner a lot of people who will find that to be very endearing whichever but it is what it is so of course like I said Dwayne Johnson Jason Statham are attached to this particular movie and you know it's moving very well whichever I'm looking forward to it the villain this of course will be Idris Elba playing this character called Brixton I'm looking forward to that he's supposed to be as he called it the creme de la creme of villains whatever coming real good and of course Idris has played you know the good guy and the bad guy so I'm curious to see how this bad guy will differ from the ones he's done in his previous movies but I'm here for it I'm a fan of um Elba so I know it's going to be good for that part I know Dwayne has made it saying you know if anybody's a fan of the uh you know Fast and Furious franchise they will love this I have no doubt that's true I know in regards to the amount of action he's going to bring of course the fight sequences with him don't even get me started with Jason Statham you know with his you know fighting abilities I can only imagine but just I'm trying not to be as biased because I am a fan of Fast and Furious first and foremost, whichever and all that. But I'll just put it like this. Me and a friend of mine from work, he and I were talking. And when I told him about, you know, them changing, you know, possibly the title and all that, the stank face I got from him, he's just like, ugh. He just like, he doesn't particularly care for it. And I said, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, whichever. But we'll have to see how that pans out. I'm just curious how this is going to work. You know, once we see the trailer, I'll see what I'm working with. Right now, it's not how I'm a list to see this. I know this comes out in 019, so we'll have to see how it looks, whichever. I might change my mind, whichever. We'll have to see with that. Now, the title they're going with for this one is supposed to be titled Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw. No, I'm sorry. Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Excuse me. I want to get that correct because at first it was supposed to be just Hobbs and Shaw. I thought that was perfectly fine before. That's why I feel like it's like a little slight dig by putting that part in there you know so i'm assuming and this is how i think this is going to happen they're going to name it this if this does well and it's a possibility it probably will then if they do a second one it's going to probably be just be called hobbs and shaw because that's what we thought it was going to be from the beginning and i don't know if they kind of like that but i see how they're going to throw that little part in there like they're trying to use that to kind of get people in there whichever 
I'm going to tell you like this. We'll see. We'll see. So that's all I have to say about that. But the date of it when it's supposed to be released will be August the 2nd, 2019. So like I said, that's going to be a summer blockbuster, as you all know. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff coming out in, um, in 2019. So it is full-fledged uh, movies for the summer. I mean, just going from, honestly, from March all the way down to the end of the summer. So I, I, I will keep my eyes on this one. Like I said, if I see a, a teaser or whatever and it looks good and all that, I can put aside my feelings all in and just, you know, go in it, you know, and just enjoy it for what it is, whatever. But, you know, it just feel like it, the movie has a little bit of a cloud over it, so, so to speak. So, but speaking of Fast and the Furious, of course, I'm hearing word now that, of course, some people from the franchise are coming back. We have Michelle Rodriguez and Tyrese Gibson. They will be back, of course, for Fast and Furious 9. I'm actually happy to see that they both will be back now. Like I said, when I was talking about the Hobbs and Shaw movie, couple of people making some choice you know comments Tyrese being one of them feeling like you know Dwayne Johnson doing this movie was rather selfish whichever now for Michelle Rodriguez her concerns were some of the females characters within the movie are not you know being given their just due especially when it comes to storyline and probably maybe so in regards to uh, monetary but definitely storyline I do agree with that because it just seems like it's so much more potential for them to do and if anybody I would think that they would consider giving a lot more of a storyline to at times would definitely be Michelle she been with it literally since day one and granted she wasn't in this you know the second one or you know the other one i'm sorry tokyo drift she was in all of them from there on out so i'm hoping that the powers that be do hear this and that they decide you know to kind of tweak a couple of things moving forward with uh the actual movie now the movie is not supposed to start filming until maybe they said spring so maybe like march april and this is supposed to have a 2020 release date because it has been pushed back due to the simple fact that they're doing uh, the Hobbs and Shaw movie. So I know some people weren't too happy. Like I said, the main person I'm not hearing from that we have not heard anything. He's very quiet. That's one thing about him. He doesn't let it be known how he feels. He keeps to himself. He's very private. And that's Vin Diesel. He doesn't do a lot of talking. He does any, most of the talking he does when it comes to interviews is when he's promoting the movie. Other than that, you don't hear a peep out of him. He just stays under the radar. He does his movies. And that's all you hear from him. I give him kudos for that. I know he is working on, and I think he might be finishing up, um, wrapping up the film where he might have already finished it and that's the movie Bloodshot so I figure it should be wrapping up either at the beginning of next year or right before they start production um and um I think by April for the Fast and the Furious 9 now I know they're going to be doing a Fast and Furious 10 and that will end the overall franchise series altogether. so and I figured it will be probably by 10 they'll probably call it a day whichever and I think that's a good number just to stop whatever because a lot of people are like how much more they can go on but I'm like this the people are still going. It's still making money. They love it. But I feel like yeah, everything does need to truly come to an end. And I feel like all of them, you know, have, you know, served us their purpose, you know, trying to move along the storyline, the arc. And hopefully these last two will do just that and get back to what we know them from, from the first one. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to see it. Um, the date for that one will be listed as April 10th, 2020. So like I said, if they start, like I said, March, April, then that lets us know that that gives them all through the summer or going to the fall to um, finish up production, whichever. I don't know how many different scene locations they'll be because, you know, they love to travel to so many different, you know, areas, you know, to showcase, you know, the, the star power here, there, the action sequences, everything. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. So, but moving on from that. Now, there's one movie I'm kind of interested in, and it's a particular director who's attached, and that is um, Ava DuVernay. I'm looking forward to it because she's supposed to be working on some sort of comic book movie uh, for DC called New Guys, and I hope that is true. We're not hearing too much now. I had discussed this, I want to say, earlier in the year, maybe early spring of this year, about her being attached to this, but no real any more information from that she's been you know promoting other movies that she's been involved with and also other documentaries that she's been working with you know through let's say Netflix whichever so I'm curious to see if we're going to start getting more information about her being involved of course her being attached to directing you know who's tweaking the writing for this story and also who's going to come on board as the the main cast of this movie now from what I'm hearing they said this this particular new gods whatever is tells a story of beings dubbed as gods who hail from two different planets a paradise named new genesis and hellscape known as apocalypse now i know uh, and justly the villain stephen wolf was from apocalypse now i do know that much good with my research with that part so what they're saying is in the comics uh high father is locked in an eternal battle with apocalypse an owned leader dark seed so it would make sense for the movie to focus around new genesis royal family 
That's what they're noting when they spoke with um, the people in regards to the movie. They're saying Dark Seed uh, was originally set to appear at the end of Justice League, and I remember hearing about that. But following extensive reshoots, he was dropped. I won't even go into that. That's a whole different uh, topic right there. Dark Seed isn't confirmed to appear in New Gods, but he's likely uh, a choice for villain duties. So we'll have to see. This is something totally out of her element, whichever and all. So I know that's going to give her a challenge to do this. And when you're dealing with comics, you, you want to get as close to source material as you can. Because anybody who's a, a comic book lover and reads them faithfully, they're going to let you know. And she will literally get crucified. So I'm hoping she's getting a little bit into reading them, knowing about them, talking to people, and having the right people around her when she brings this uh you know to fruitation i really want her to do this very well because being that she you know, and some putting this out here i'm just going to be straight honest we do have a lot of you know black nerds whichever you want to say it, whatever but having somebody at the helm of one of these particular films is a dc female director and a black female director at that it's like extra pressure to be on point that's how i feel i can't speak how for anyone else and how they feel but i feel like this this is definitely one of the ones that she has to you know take into consideration and, and you know, go in there, not with kid gloves on. You got to go in there and do your thing with this one. So I'm looking forward to this. I know that um, most of the DC movies are trying to move away from the shared universe in regards to what's happening previously. You know, seeing stuff like with Justice League and all that. I know we're not going to be getting any movies with uh, Ben Affleck playing Batman or Henry Cavill playing uh, Superman anytime soon. I'm still bummed about that because I really want my man of steel too, but I'm not going to say say nothing. Uh, <coughs> I'm not going to go there. I did you know so but anyway so i'm looking forward to her um like i said showcasing this movie knowing more about this movie you know as more information develops i will definitely bring this guys to you because i am curious to know more about this one i love that i'm learning a little bit more about all the different dc comics i'm not familiar with as much so as certain ones like you know what is it harley quinn joker of course batman superman wonder woman all the the normal ones are used to seeing of course you know flash aquaman whatever so it's nice to be introduced to ones i'm not familiar with and i get to learn you know as i go as well so but with that one like i said beginning stages she's in talk she's to, you know to direct like i said we don't know who's you know writing photography cinematography all that stuff whatever once i know more as you all know you will know more so moving on from that now this is one that i'm looking forward to and i am very very excited about this and also the casting on this has me so so excited now this one is about john wick 3 now we're getting some new photo sets and i noticed that a certain person has been added to the cast now a couple um months ago i posted about john wick you know of course i'm showing him on a horse and we're showing him you know you know going certain places where you know he's in different locations and of course we saw pictures of him you know where they're showing that one particular cast member has been added and that was halle berry i'm excited for her and her character in this movie it's called Sophia. She's a professional assassin as well. I'm looking forward to her. The picture showed her as being like a little badass walking in on the hall with her two, her dogs, whatever. Just straight baddie. So here for her. Love me some Halle Berry. So the person in this particular uh, photo from what looks like to be, I want to say, um, Entertainment Weekly is none other than Angelica Houston. I am a fan of Angelica Houston. I love her. And I just love this. And she plays the director of The High Table. I love that we get to see her in is now she's been doing mostly i see uh tv and some sort of animation at times whatever and all but nothing in movies as of lately so i love that they brought her on for this the director of part of this if i'm not mistaken is chad stahl Helsky. and i'm happy that you know he is you know mixing up his casting with a lot of people we know of course we had ian uh, mcshane he came in i love him we had Lawrence fishburne whichever all these people play an integral role you know in john wick you know in certain aspects of him and that's why i'm so excited that she's on board now as well and like i said with halle berry as well coming on board you know as well so with this one i want to note this and this was actually the magazine empire um, correct myself my apologies for that you get the first look like i said you know they say houston's character is somewhat who was responsible for john's upbringing and his protection i like that it says we're trying and as he spoke they actually interviewed him you know chad in regards to his feelings about um angelic houston's character he says we were trying to make it, it that there are different tribes less non-descriptive assassins angelic houston is playing kind of like a roma ruska character type i love that 
I am just here for it. I'm here to see what they're getting. We're not getting, it's almost like we're getting little breadcrumbs. We haven't seen anything else. We're seeing, you know, screenshots from scenes of certain people in the movie. Of course, nothing else from that. Now the movie comes out in May. <laughs> my birthday month yay and it's right before i go on my trip yay there so i'm excited to see um when they're going to put out a trailer i want to think if not january maybe february i want to think probably before the end of january but definitely within the first week or two weeks of february because like i said it comes out may i think it's may 18th so is it May 18th? Yes, May 18th. That's Friday. Okay, I had to think right there because I said trip is on the 20th. Okay. So, yeah. So, I'm looking forward to seeing this um, right before I go on my birthday trip so I can enjoy some John Wick 3, whichever. So, yes, like I said, I'm all here for um, this third installment. I'm a fan of Keanu Reeves since I can't even say. Let me put like this well before Bill and Ted's, uh, you know, the Bill and Ted movies. And Angelica Houston phenomenal she's fabulous Halle Berry fabulous so I'm just looking forward to seeing whoever else will be added to it these are the main people that I know are attached to this movie there could be some other people I hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on some other people who are cast I can make like a nice little um overall casting whichever but like I said who knows we'll probably eventually see something soon and they might know some other people who are coming as uh, supporting roles as well so but this looks really good I'm looking forward to this oh I'm so excited to see her in this I know a lot of people were expecting that but I love when um, certain movies catch you off guard with some of your favorites, and this is one of my favorites, so I'm totally here for it. So, But speaking of uh, John Wick, the director I was talking about, Chad, he is also wanting to be considered to do a reboot on um, a, a, actually a movie franchise that I grew up watching in the early 80s and also watching the TV series, and that is Highlander. I loved me some Highlander when I was growing up. I'm a fan of Christopher Lambert. He was awesome. I thought he was so cute. Uh, he was good in all of them. I loved him in the first one. The second one was okay. Loved him in the third one. Also because I'm a little biased because I loved him in that one because he was in it with Mario Van Peebles. And I love that one. Van, Mario Van Peebles was straight cray. <laughs> that one, the third installment, whichever. And then, of course, you remember the TV series, which was uh, starred um, Adrian Paul. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Um, I know he's been trying to do a new uh, take on it with, you know, Connor McCloud. I'm totally totally down for that now they're stating that um Lionsgate is kind of pleased with the script they've been working kind of on it's still kind of stagnant because this has been in the works for quite a few years whichever but I think he's trying to keep it you know in the minds of the movie you know company to see if they'll still want to be it I know that some names have been thrown out there like Tom Cruise um I'm trying to think of some other names I had noted on here whichever they even threw out there um Ryan Reynolds you know, now for the swordsmanship that could go into that, I can see that. But I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's already doing that in Deadpool, whatever. That might be a little bit too much, whatever, and all that. And they probably can. The sad thing is that once you pick a certain role, you almost feel like you get typecast. And it seems like anytime he does something and you hear his voice, you always want to just throw him in there with Deadpool. I'm glad I can differentiate the two. It's sad that some individuals can't do that. It's like, you know, stop. His voice has always been the way it is. I don't always think of his voice when I think of Deadpool. I don't know where people get that, but it is what it is it's just ridiculous but I know one thing he recently spoke to um, Entertainment Weekly for this one not like I did with the Empire for the other one he says right now I'm very interested in doing the Highlander property it's scarily similar to John Wick I think so a little bit too there's a great mythology it's got an action design challenge what would a guy do what would he really be like 500 years of practicing sword work I'm still a stunt guy at heart that's where I have to remind myself of that um, you want to reinvent gunfights, how do you do it? You want to reinvent sword fighting, how would you do that? And that's where we are at now. Okay. I love the first Highlander and I think I'm a pretty good spot. The creative team, the producers, and the studios that's behind it have kind of said it's yours to play with. Like that. Now I know he's a co- him and his co-director David Leach who did, who did Deadpool. Um, they kind of reinvented to me um, the way they do uh, 
the gunplay, the gunfight sequences like you see in John Wick and of course in Deadpool. Like, you know, I love how John, just the way he would shoot up, whatever, you know, flip down, whatever and all, they try to turn him over, whatever, and get the upper hand. He'd always find a way to get around and then shoot him up, whatever, and all that. Just straight like video game style, literally. And of course, with Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds doing his thing, whatever, with swordmanship. So it's doable. It is doable. I love that they're giving him free reign to play with this. So that lets us know they really want to do this. Now, the thing that comes into play also is who do they want to cast? They have to find the right person, and if they do, who's going to be this person? And they're not going to be subjected to just one movie. If the movie does well, they're looking to do a second and maybe a third. This can go into doing multiple movies and also doing a resurgence of a TV series. Now, for that one, they'd have to find somebody different because if they're going to do a TV series, they want that to last quite a few seasons. I can see, if anything, at least four, you know, and then where would you go on? Are they going to have it on sci fi? Is it going to be AMC? What channel are they going to put this on? Whichever, A and E, whatever. No, there's so many different ways they can go with this. I can see more so AMC or maybe sci fi, something like that, or maybe even Showtime whichever so i'm down for it i'm hoping this is just the beginning uh talks that they're now wanting to move forward they're liking what he's put out with john wick that they can see the potential like i said it definitely pounds down now to who they're going to cast they have the look the overall endurance stamina blah 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 blah, blah. so we'll have to see how that goes because i'm here for it so but moving on you guys now one thing i want to discuss <laughs> real quick was of course you all know like a week or so ago um a picture from entertainment Weekly came out for will smith playing aladdin um the movie aladdin excuse me and of course him being the genie of course you see how he looks doesn't look like he's blue a lot of people weren't too happy about that but let's just say that on social media we'll kind of put everybody at ease and he let them know that for right now he is of course regular skin but within the movie, at some point, he will become blue. And I love that he had to do it. I kept thinking to myself, I feel like it's going to happen. But I think we really, truly needed a confirmation. And I'm glad that they did that. Now, I know this is going to be directed by Guy Ritchie. I'm excited about that. I'm a fan of some of his work over the years. Like movies like Snatch, uh, Swept Away, things of that nature, whichever. So I'm looking forward to seeing his stamp on this. Because I don't feel like he's anything in regards to anything um, in regards to property of Disney. So this is one of those ones where he has hopefully he was delicate with this because a lot of people loved Aladdin it's one of those fan favorites from Disney so there's pressure same thing for Will pressure he better bring it we know he has comedic chops and the genie is very funny within the overall animation so I can only imagine so I love Will and I love what he puts out there forth with his um selection of movies so I'm giving him the kudos to know that he can do this so I'm hopingly that I'm not wrong and I'm praying that he does this justice if not that's not going to be good because there's other Disney movies coming out. We have early in this year of next year, Dumbo. And then, of course, we have this and we have Lion King. So it's like between the three of them, we're going to see who's going to um, do the best. I'm just going to be honest. I really feel like out of all three of those, Lion King is going to make the bank. I really feel like that. The amount of people I saw watch that reaction to that trailer and literally just, just the smiles, especially when the song started, you know, I, you know, they all going to equally make their money, but I feel like out of all three of them, that's going to be the one that's going to take it home. But I'm just saying so. I'm looking forward to um, seeing Will do his thing, whatever this would. I feel like he has it in him. And if Guy didn't feel like, you know, he had the potential, you know, the charisma, whatever, and all that, he wouldn't have chosen him. Because I kept thinking, who else could they have chosen? But there are probably some people out there. Just nobody's coming to my mind at the moment. But I bet you somebody in the comment section would let me know if they had an idea of who else could have played that part. I'm just saying. So, but for this one... Also, Guy Ritchie, I want to know what he said when they discussed this with him. He says, the design of how he'll look as Gene, whatever, would be a muscular 1970s dad. So we'll see overall once he, you know, really looks like he's supposed to look. I feel like he's going to turn into his true form, whatever, but, you know, getting, you know, to, you know, mosey up to Aladdin, you know, to befriend him, whatever. He's going to look more like him. And then eventually he'll show his true self, whatever, to him, whatever, and all that, and all the things he can do for Aladdin, whatever, on this adventure and this journey they're going to be going on together. So I'm looking forward to So this comes out, again, in my birthday month, May 24th, 2019. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'll be on the trip during that time. So I guess I'll have to look at that when I get back into town. But yeah, it's a lot of stuff coming out in May. Yay for me. So but moving on from that one. Now the last... Um, well, close to the last one is um, the one I want to discuss is Conjuring 3. 
I'm already here for this. I'm excited. Of course, you already know um, the two main characters played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga will, of course, be in this one. This is being produced by James Wan. He's not directing this. I was kind of bummed when he didn't. But the brother's been busy, a.k.a. Aquaman. So I can't, you know, be too mad about that. So, but yes, this particular one, now you remember the first one. You have the family living in the house, whatever, with the kids, whatever. And of course, the mother eventually becomes possessed. Not towards the beginning, but certain things lurking and happening in the house, whatever, and all that. That was a good one. I honestly love the second one a little bit more. And I love it because it was a possession of the young one of the young daughters in the movie, whichever. Done very well, very creepy, living in a house that was already had spirits and all that and a specific spirit but then a stronger one that basically takes a hold of her whichever that was done very well now this particular one if they wanted to note says we'll focus on a murder trial where a demonic possession was used as a legal defense that's a nice interesting twist on this particular one and not going the normal way they normally do so i'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out this does remind me of the movie uh the uh what is it the, i want to say the exorcism of emily rose uh, just from the overall synopsis of that part, whichever, and all that, because that instantly clicked on me for that one. And I know those are true events, whichever. The girl's name was Annalise Michelle. This was based off of her real life events. Now, for this one, I wanted to note some of the things that came out in regards to the party. said it's not necessarily based on an artifact, but it's based on one of the Warren's cases files. And they're stating this because I'm assuming they're going to show some parts that are show, like, you know, maybe some circular photos information you might hear some audio as well they say it's the guy who was on trial for committing a murder i think it's the first time in america's history where the defendant used possessions as a reason and as an excuse uh, in regards to this particular murder i'm really looking forward to seeing this one and their different take on this i love how this um conjuring franchise has opened up of course we got to be introduced to annabelle of course annabelle creations things of that nature and all that and i love annabelle creation annabelle moving mm, not so much i know they finished wrapping up a filming Annabelle 3 I'm looking forward to seeing that and just seeing this one I know that um, knowing more of the plot now of this is really good and I love that we get to see exactly what we're going to be dealing with like I said I'm looking forward to seeing excuse me Ed and Lorraine Warren come back and do their thing and how they're going to be involved in this instance with this particular case are they going to be in the court are they going to be doing some background investigation things of that nature sounds very exciting Still don't know the date of this. It's, I think this is coming out next year. And I don't know if it's closer to the end of the summer or going more into um, the fall. They didn't stipulate the actual date. I was trying to note that, but I don't have that in my notes that I put down. So when I know more about that date, I will definitely let you guys know. But I'm definitely here for it. And I'm definitely excited to see that. So, But with that said, you guys, moving on. Now, the last order of business is this one is definitely filmed and wrapped up. And that is DC's uh, Joker. Now, I'm excited because I know a lot of people were kind of iffy about this movie, this even happening at all. Joaquin Phoenix, like, nah, we've been there, we've done that, whatever. But I'm kind of excited for it. And I'm hyped to see this um, from all the, you know, the photos of him, you know, looking very, you know, daunting, whatever, rather aged you know, whichever, and then also seeing sets of him, you know, wearing, you know, clown, you know, makeup whatever certain shots of him in the subway where all these people with clown faces whatever just looking just real straight creepy totally here for it so i'm just happy to feel like it's now done now for this one they said production i remember it started i want to say in the fall of this year so i want to say i think it was like september early september so not that many months they needed whichever so and i know this is kind of circa set in the 80s the way they're doing this particular um joker movie um, his overall appearance, his look, case in point Joker, of course, with the suit, purplish suit, whichever. I just feel like it's going to be a little bit different from the other ones like they did in regards to Dark, the Dark Knight trilogy. And of course, the one they did with the Batman movie with Jack Nicholson. And I don't mind a, a set of fresh eyes on representation for Joker. I know there's been different ways they've done Joker over the, the decades, not even years, decades. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, their stamp on this. Like I said, the cast is off the chain. Of course, him. Got Robert De Niro, uh, Zazie Beetz. Um, I'm forgetting the woman who's playing his mother. Excuse me, that her name just went straight out of my head. Whichever. But the fact that the director on this is Todd Phillips and executive producer on this is um, Mark Scorsese. I'm, I'm down for it. Like I said, I was here for it when I heard they were attached. So I know it's going to be good. I love. I just love just the fact that they're involved because I feel like they're going to make sure it's done very well. We have over ten months before this comes out so it gives them time to edit do everything they need to do 
I feel like we might get a teaser around Comic-Con and I'm here for it. I'm excited for that. So hopefully we'll get to see uh, that, you know, around that time, whatever, because yeah, because by then the movie comes out in October. So we'd have to see something probably by summer. They might show it. Yeah, they might show that around that time. I think that by then it should be you never know summer and then maybe a trailer closer to Comic-Con. I don't know. So We'll have to see because before you know the summer will be here and it'll be over and then right around that time all this good stuff will come out in the fall. We'll have all this great stuff in the summer but fall is going to get some good stuff as well. So, But yes, they were saying, um, Todd Phillips said on his official Instagram how of course, you know, principal photography has been, you know, completed, done. Now they're going to continue in the editing room. So yes, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to showcase for this. I'm looking forward to seeing what King Phoenix do his thing. Definitely looking forward to seeing De Niro do his thing, whichever. Like I said, I just feel like a lot of people are sleeping on it. I'm totally down for this. And like I said, if Joaquin will come on it and he sees the potential and even De Niro, I feel like they have a winner. And I feel like DC is is trying it. They're not like I said before, and I'm gonna say it again. I love them equally. Marvel is still a little above in regards to the rate of the pace of the movies they're putting out for the way they're doing their storyline arc with all their different characters. But DC is slowly trying to come up and show that they can, you know, do their own thing. And they don't have to be the same. I don't want them to be the same. I like that they're different and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what I want to see. You know, just do you. Don't be like them. And, and everything should be fine, whichever. So I feel like we're in for a treat. The day it comes out will be October 4th of next year. So like I said, I'm looking forward to that. And with that, you guys, that is it. I'm excited with all these little good little um, little crumps I put out for some of this good stuff that's coming out, some good reboots, some movies that have finally uh, finished production that are now in production to be finished so we can see them next year, some 2020, but I'm, I'm totally looking forward to it. So you guys comment below. You want to talk about some Wonder Woman? You want to talk about some uh, Highland? You want to talk about some Fast and Furious? You know, some Joker? Let me have it in the comment section. And with that said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my movie news. And again, happy holidays, you guys. Hope you all are enjoying your Christmas. And I will see you on the next one. You guys take care.